Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and everyone who is helping to lead worship, we welcome you. We are so excited that you are joining in this time of online worship. It is Pentecost Sunday, a wonderful celebration uh, across the Christian church, across the world. So we're really excited that you're joining with us for this special celebration. I want to extend a special welcome to anybody who may be joining in online worship with us for the first time. We are particularly excited that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and we want to encourage you to fill out our contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section. I would like for everyone who's joining with us to fill out that contact form. This uh, allows us to be able to, well, connect with you, uh, to be able to uh, come up alongside you in your journey of faith, to be able to connect you into our e-newsletter, which is the best way to get to know about everything going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And then in that contact form, there is a place for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form today. Now, when we gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. Now, that covenant to participation is that, well, we're just going to go ahead and participate in what is going on in worship. When it's time to sing, go ahead and just sing out. When it's time to pray, join us in praying. We invite you to turn off other distractions and devices so that you can focus in. Maybe light a candle if that will help you to focus, and then just fully participate in this time of worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way we're in the comment section together, the way we may be uh, together with other people as we're worshiping, the way that we're with our community in the entire world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone. As we continue into our time of worship, I invite you to join with us now in centering with some music that is provided to us by our Wesley Handbell Choir. Welcome to worship. Hi, I'm Emily LaFrance. I'm a member at DAUMC. Please receive this call to worship. We are We're all Jesus' church, church together. Let us tell about the goodness of God. Sing praise to God. Let's tell about the love of Jesus Christ. Sing praise to Christ. Let us tell about the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. Sing praise to the Spirit. We are all Jesus' church together. We are all Jesus' church together. Please join us in singing, We Are the Church. Oh, 
please join me in the spirit of prayer as I read aloud the opening prayer. Spirit of God, present since before creation, fall upon us now. Whisper to us, shout to us, comfort us, discomfort us. We confess that we too often do not listen for your Holy Spirit. We close ourselves to your whispers and shouts, preferring the noise of our daily lives. We silence the wisdom available to us through your spirit of truth. Open our lives to your holy whispers and shouts that our very lives may be a testimony to your love and powerful work in the world. Amen. Receive this assurance. In the name of Jesus Christ, who sent us the spirit of truth, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to continue sharing that love and peace and forgiveness with one another. You can do that by saying, peace be with you and responding and also with you. You can do that in the comment section. You can, of course, do that with folks that you may be joined with uh, wherever it is you're worshiping today. And you can share peace with me as well. Peace be with you. Good morning. It's good to be with you. My name is Frank Beard and I'm the resident bishop of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. I'm also a wayward attender of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I haven't been for a while, but I will return. I will be back. And uh, I look forward to joining uh, with you in worship and celebration. And of course, when we can eat again together, I look forward to that uh, as well. My wife, Melissa and me, we uh, look forward to uh, being with you and. We are so grateful and so thankful uh, for the ministry that you all engage in. And just want to say, hope that things go well today, that you sense the presence of Jesus and the peace of God be with you. Hello, my name is Tom Crable. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I serve on the Finance Committee and the Endowment Committee. Peace be with you. And also with you. We're the San Diego's. I'm Allison. I'm Albert. And this is Caleb, who's getting baptized today. Peace be with you. Hello, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are gathered with us in worship to come in really close to your device, to your screen, so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. Let's see what Miss Laurie and Laud have for us right now with small talk. Hello, everyone. I am Miss Lori, and I am here with, we know Laud, Laud's assistant, Cohen, and we have a friend joining us today, Barry. Barry the Basset Hound has come to visit Laud. So yeah, I know that's exciting. Well, today is an exciting day. It is a day of Pentecost. Now, Pentecost is when many of Jesus' followers had gathered, and God had promised at some point to return and to fill, to fill everyone with the Holy Spirit. So while everyone was gathered, a huge wind came up. Huge, right Cohen? So, to show wind, Lod has his spinner, are we ready? Yes, a great wind came up upon them. And, believe it or not, a flame above their heads. Come over here, Barry. There we go, a flame. I don't know, oh, I lost my flame. It's hard to see flame, yes. But a flame fell upon their heads. You can pretend that this is our flame because it's kind of, kind of like that. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They started speaking in other languages and 
feeling God's presence within them. Can you hit our, our next item? The, the, you know, what we need now, Cohen and Laud. Yes, they were filled. The whole room was filled with the Holy Spirit, as were they. We're having some issues with wind right now, but we're trying to fill our entire yard to show you with bubbles. Laud's working on it. Yeah, some days these go better than others. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn the camera, which I don't usually do, but I am, oh, there we go. And we were filled with the Holy Spirit, just like these bubbles are filling our frame and Barry and Laud are trying to catch them. So remember that, guys. And feel yourself being filled with the Holy Spirit in bubbles. Bye. Jesus loves you and so do we. Please join us in singing Spirit of the Living God. My name is Joy Brown and I'm part of the youth group. Hi, I'm Jill Gordon and I'm UMW president. I'm Steve Dunker and I'm part of the finance committee. Today's reading from the Bible is Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. When the day of Pentecost had come, Jesus' disciples were together and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, people heard it and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Perithians, Medes, Elimites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phagia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What, what does, does this mean? But the others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, 
Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young shall see visions. And your old shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above. And signs on the earth below. Blood. And fire. And smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness. And the moon to blood. Before the coming of that great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on God's name shall be saved. May God bless the hearing and understanding of the Bible verse we have received today. Amen. Today is a big festival day for the Christian church all around the world. It is the day of Pentecost. Today is when we recall the dramatic story of the Holy Spirit giving birth to Christ's church by energizing the disciples, Jesus' followers. I'm so appreciative of Steve and Jill and Joy and their presentation of that Bible story today to help us really experience that Pentecost story. I want to call our attention to the beginning of the story in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. We heard how on that day there was a sound like a huge wind and what looked like tongues of fire descending upon Jesus' disciples. And in verse 4 it says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. When we tell this story and remember this story, we often make a big deal of the disciples' miraculous gift of being able to speak in other languages, and rightly so. But one of the things we need to pay close attention to is found in this truth. Making sound or speaking requires not only someone making that sound or speaking, but also someone to receive that sound or speaking. It requires someone listening. The miracle of Pentecost isn't just about speaking other tongues or languages. It's also very much about the gathered people being able to hear, to listen, and to understand. The church is birthed not just in the proclamations of what we say. The church is also birthed in the miracle of listening. Listening, really, really, and intentional listening. It's one of the most powerful gifts that we can offer our families, neighbors, church, and community. In our American culture, from advertising to social media, from schools to businesses, from news media to political punditry, all of it, it just crowds the air with a constant cacophony of voices and messages. Too often, the church attempts to get our message out by trying to speak louder and louder, only to be lost in the static of so many voices speaking at once. This is particularly difficult when the noisy airwaves are filled to the brim with the repetition of lies. A repetition that is designed over time to make people believe those lies are truth, just because the lies get repeated over and over and over and over. In our current culture, stopping talking and truly listening really is a miracle. When we practice the miracle of listening, we put the other person at the center of our attention and focus on their story. It's not just being quiet, waiting for our turn to talk. Listening isn't just having some time while someone else speaks to craft a rebuttal to what they're saying. 
Listening also doesn't mean that we uh, merge ourselves into someone's life, inserting ourselves into their story, nor does it mean that we try to solve people's problems for them. It turns out most of the time people don't need advice. They just need someone to listen as they talk through what's going on in their lives. When we listen, really listen to others, we set aside what we think we need to tell them and support their discovery of what they need to understand for themselves, allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work that only the Holy Spirit can do. I'm privileged to get to work as a leadership coach through the International Coaching Federation. And at the heart of coaching is the practice of asking questions and listening to others as the most effective way to help people discover their own solutions and strategies. I get to practice intentional listening to other leaders on a fairly regular basis. And as I support them in working through their own leadership questions, I find that I learn a lot about myself as well. As it turns out, listening doesn't just benefit the person who is being listened to. It also transforms the listener. Again, allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work that only the Holy Spirit can do. A miracle of listening indeed. Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is excited to be a part of a statewide collaboration of the Illinois Department of Public Health and the United Methodist Churches of Illinois to encourage vaccinations in our communities. For us of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, that's our family, friends, and the neighborhood we are a part of right around the DAUMC facility. We're looking forward to holding a vaccination clinic at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church sometime in the first week of June, and there will be lots of opportunities to help with that, so watch for that information. One of the things that has been interesting to me in this organizing process, particularly over this last week, has been thinking through strategies to talk with people who are hesitant or resistant to becoming vaccinated. It turns out that arguing with them talking down to them, sending articles to them, or generally social media trolling or fighting has a very low success rate in helping unvaccinated people consider becoming vaccinated. Really, it requires more thoughtfulness and care to be helpful than to be right. On the other hand, sitting down with someone and listening to their concerns and asking them questions about how to resolve their concerns in an open, affirming, and supportive way, well, that is incredibly successful. If your goal is to prove that you are right, then you just go ahead and jump into as many arguments on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as you would like. However, if your goal is to help people be healthier, by being vaccinated or having a conversation with their primary care physician about their vaccine questions, then you're better off doing way more listening than talking. Listening has the power to change lives and to change our world. It is a gift of Pentecost given to the church by the Holy Spirit right at the beginning as we listen with care and concern to those around us, we offer ourselves as God's ambassador, the God who listens to our prayers, the Christ, Jesus, who always asked and listened deeply and carefully, the Holy Spirit who opens our ears to hear and understand. Our God invites us to engage in that same deeply spiritual practice. So, let us listen to one another. Let us listen to our neighbors. Let us listen to those in our households. Let us listen to those who are not like us. Let us listen to people of color. Let us listen to the Holy Spirit. Let us listen and be transformed. Amen. Please join us in singing Spirit of God.
Good morning. Most of you know me, but if not, I am Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and Douglas Avenue is my home church. If you would please bow your head um, for prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, take and transform our hearts to be full of love. Help us to hear your spirit and work with you so that broken people can find healing, that lonely people find love, that addicted people find sobriety, that fearful people find hope, and that baptized children will grow up to love you. Come Holy Spirit, take our world leaders and governments and bring renewal that vaccines will be administered and immunity will be present all over the world. That hunger for food felt by so many will be no more. That the sick and the grieved will know your presence and find your healing. Come Holy Spirit. So your presence is known in our church and in all of our ministries. That our worship will be pleasing to you that our prayers will change our minds and align our hearts with yours. That our lives will make a difference to real people in the real world. Come Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and all that we hope will be an expression of love to others. And if you would, I invite you now to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pentecost is the birthday of the church and one of the marks of the church is our generosity. I want to thank you for all of your financial generosity into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for the ways that you are making our ministries happen online, in person, in our neighborhood and around the world. Thank you. I want to encourage you to continue to give. You can do that with our online giving portal. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section. It is also available right on our webpage so you can find it easily. You are welcome, of course, to give, uh, to give in an automatic fashion through your financial institution or through ours. If you need help setting that up, just let us know in the church office and we'd be happy to help you. And then, of course, you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We want to invite you to continue to join with us in online worship each week. You're finding us right here today. You can also join with us in in-person worship as we continue with worship on the patio. That is outdoor in this beautiful place right here on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. You can find out all the information about that in our e-newsletter and on our webpage. And we want to encourage you to continue to connect your life of faith and growing in faith with opportunities for ministry. And I'm going to lift up a few of those. One of those is finally here. It's our next session of Vital Conversations on Race, which is this Monday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m. On your own, watch the wonderful documentary, part one and part two of The Black Church, which is available on PBS. And then participate in our online small group discussion as we're learning in praying with our vital conversations that's again on Monday at 6 30. We're seeking to understand and dismantle systems of racism through continuing education, advocacy, and lifestyle changes. You can use the links in our e-newsletter to sign up to participate or contact us in the church office so that we can send you the links.
Now, the annual fundraising bike ride to support the His Home Orphanage in Haiti is coming up. It is the week of June 21st. If you are interested in riding a bike in this fundraising um, effort, and there will be bike rides all over our area locally going in and out each day, you are encouraged to check out all the information in our e-newsletter or contact Kathy Lambden through the church office. Riders need to be registered by June 7th. You can also support the ride through our online giving portal you can see the special drop-down menu that is there or send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church designated to his home orphanage and then we want you to mark your calendars now and register now for our summer's vacation Bible school celebrating God's creation family camp for kids and for people of all ages that's going to be Monday June 21st through Thursday June 24th from 6 30 to 7 30 p.m. and it's going to be an outdoor fun in-person experience with music and story and activities. Registration is available right now through our e-newsletter. Contact us in the church office to get registered as well or if you need more information. And as I keep saying that e-newsletter, it is the best way to um, know about everything that's going on and to be able to connect into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, particularly as we gear up to hold our vaccination clinic in the next couple of weeks, the beginning of June. So please use that contact form. Make sure that we have your email address or call us in the church office to get you connected in that way. We love to be connected with you to be able to help you grow in your faith and to be a part of your life. Thank you for all of that giving and connecting. Good morning. Please join us in singing Soul on Fire.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We are just so pleased and feel so honored that you have spent this time with us. We pray that this experience has been meaningful to you, has been empowering for you, that has been uplifting for you, that you will join with us again in online worship or join with us in our outdoor uh, worship on the patio on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., that you will let us connect with you so that you can be a part of all of the small group opportunities to grow in your faith, all of the opportunities for serving and growing in your faith, and just so that we can be together as we love and follow Jesus Christ in the world. Remember to use that contact form so that we can be in contact with you. And remember that there is a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. And now, as you do, go into your day. Go knowing that the God of love surrounds you entirely with love and grace. That Jesus Christ gifts you and loves you and is with you every day. And that the Holy Spirit is raining down power and love and purpose on each of us every day. Go with that Holy Spirit's power to be in service to our world. Amen. Amen.